and then my wife read an article in the paper, and it, and it, it talked about this race, and it had this little byline in there, and, that, and I've been mentioned a few times as being a trailblazer, and that the Republicans were looking for somebody to run, and and it mentioned that there there was no mention of, you know, I had not had any listed any intentions of running. And my wife asked me, she said, are, are you going to run again? And I said, well, you know, no, I wasn't going to do that. I mean, I would just gone through a year of knowing what running for office was, particularly in the grassroots space. And I said, I, I can't do that to you. And she said, no. She said, we're fine. She said, I think you ought to run again because I think you'll win. So I drove to Austin and followed. I have a history of following like on the deadline. <laughs> and I followed again and, and went out and I drew a primary opponent. I spent about $6,000 in the primary. My opponent spent, I don't know, 60 or something. And I ended up winning that race. Carried every county but Montgomery County. My home county, I lost. <laughs> <laughs> but my opponent was from Montgomery County. He spent a lot of money. But I won that race on, I think, 84 votes. 84 votes. There's nearly that many precincts in Montgomery County in this, in this district. So, I mean, you know, when somebody talks about their vote doesn't count or it doesn't matter, I mean, we're talking about a fraction of a vote per precinct that ended up winning that primary. And suddenly people were going, hey, this kid can actually win an election. And I was able to raise a little bit of money, actually raised about $50,000. That was fortune to me in a campaign. And Parker, evidently I got his attention because he spent over $800,000 that time. And I just continued the same path that I'd done before, except I had a little bit to buy some radio and some talk radio here and there. And when it was all over, I took 53% of the vote in a district that was still classified as a 60% Democrat district. And I became the first Republican elected this seat since 1876. And I was the youngest senator in the state at 29. Average age in the Senate was 56. And um, Bob Bullock referred to me as Pup. <laughs> but, you know, I, 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 I'm running again this time. Because for 20 years, for over 20 years now, I've been working to help build a Republican majority in Texas. And, and in my mind, building a Republican majority was a conservative majority. Amen. Right. And I find it remarkable that 20 years later, we're still fighting and arguing about the same issues. We're still hearing the same promises over and over you know, we, we ended up with a with a Republican majority in Congress. Right? And what did it get? It got us Barack Obama. That's what it got us. Because the base is, it has been beat down by a war of attrition. You know, I had a, a fellow that, that has supported me in the past over in, in East County. He's big on the immigration issue. And I called him after I had, I had filed and, and talked to him a little bit, and, and he told me, he said, I'm just tired. He said, you know, I fought and fought on this for the last four or five years on the immigration issue, and we've gotten nowhere. He said, I'm just tired. And that's a strategy. That actually is a strategy. It is a war of attrition. They wear you down till you give up. You know, I like to... I like to refer to, and y'all probably heard me say this before, you know, lots of times it, there are so-called moderates, if you will, they'll call them rhinos, but I refer to them as a squeaky wheel Republican. Because what happens is when the base starts squealing about an issue, they reach over to pump a little grease in you and shut you up. Mm -hmm. yeah. But nothing ever changes. Amen. We're still talking about reducing government. 